All right, everybody, we are being joined now by Coach V. Uh, we will open the line for questions unless, Coach, you'd like to make an opening statement. No, I don't have anything to open up with other than just I know our guys are incredibly excited. Uh, it's been a tough and challenging uh, five months. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty surreal uh, that game day is just a few days away. So um, we're all very, very thankful uh, for the leadership of our university and our athletic department and uh, most proud of our players um, for how they've handled um, all of the uh, things that have come up, come uh, with the last six months, five and a half months, um, from social uh, justice to uh, the COVID and and uh, and everything in between. It's been a very emotional um, and uh, draining, if you will, uh, you know, five and a half, six months. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there's always good uh, in the middle of the bad. And our guys have had uh, uh, have done an amazing job at both leading and galvanizing and unifying, you know, through through all of this. We'll open it up for questions. Hey, uh, Hey, hey, Brent. This is Larry yep. Williams. How you doing? Larry, good. How are you? Um, I'm good. It seems like five years ago that Skowski got the targeting call in, in New Orleans. So it was almost surprising to hear last week that he's going to have to sit the the first half Saturday. I'm assuming that Jake is 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 the guy there. And um, what are your sort of I guess thoughts on how you uh, go through the first half? That yeah, happens. yeah, that you know, that's the rules in college football where it carries over uh, from that last game. So we've known that, you know, for quite some time, and have made you know plans and you know how we've practiced and things of that nature uh, through all of our good on good work. So uh, Jake's ready for the moment. You know, he's gotten some opportunities last year as a redshirt freshman and came in and did some really nice things under uh, pressure um, and you know in in uh, uh, mop up time as well. And uh, he's very focused and serious, and about his uh, you know responsibilities and his opportunity, and uh, has a great deal of uh, value and respect for the preparation that it takes uh, in the course of the game. And and uh, so I'm excited uh, for him. Feel good um, about not only him but uh, Kane Patterson and Kevin Swint uh, as well. They've all they've all had nice camps, and Jake's also worked uh, at some you know will linebacker uh, you know for the last year or so. Brent, this is Matt Connolly with the state. What what did you see from Braden Galloway last year? Uh, how did how did you see him kind of develop as a thing? You worked guys on scout team, so just what what did you see from him? Well, I think he's always been a very talented guy. Um, you know, he's got length. He can run, super athletic, and um, you know, I was most proud of Braden coming over on scout team. That's a hard thing going from a. Uh, you know, an every down player or a very integral part of, you know, an incredible offense to, hey, you're going to go run over there and get screamed at, you know, every day uh, on scout team uh, without getting, the, you know, the game reps and things like that. So I was really proud of uh, Braden. I think it helped him mature and grow up and have an appreciation and a value for, you know, what it takes to get, you know, to get ready for a game and the value that you can uh, take away from, uh, you know, the grind every day of improving, you know, working on your fundamentals and your skill set and certainly your mindset, you know, uh, because we're not letting you hide on scout team. You know, you got to come over and you got to perform and give great effort. And uh, there's a lot of precision that goes with that. And uh, so you got to start with having the mature mindset. And uh, he did an incredible job for us. Uh, we were really fortunate to, to have him over as part of that group and really helped us get better and prepare. A week in and week out. Anybody with anything else for Coach? Hey, yeah. Coach Venables, this is um, Grace Rayner from the Athletic. I've been hey, just, I'm just wondering if you could compare and contrast uh, Mario and Andrew Booth, kind of skill set wise, and what you see there. Uh. You know, Andrew's incredibly high cut, high waisted, a really long limbed, um, 
twitchy, uh, you know, very physically tough, you know, mentally tough, high wired, you know, we, you know, to be honest, you know, he's been here, uh, you know, over a year now and uh, half of it he spent, you know, rehabbing and just not being healthy. And uh, so he's, he's been at a different level in, in regards to his confidence, his mindset, and, and then the play follows that. Uh, he's had an excellent, excellent, uh, you know, camp in particular. And um, just completely on another planet when it comes to where he is mentally, you know, some of the things he was struggling through uh, from an injury standpoint a year ago, and just, uh, you know, had the, the surgery to get him better. And then, you know, Mario, um, very, again, his first play, I remember uh, very distinctly, his first play on his high school uh, huddle highlight was a, was a, a tackle, a uh, blow up tackle. And um, he's in cover two and, and blows the uh, perimeter uh, run, uh, just blows it up. And uh, I just had a great appreciation for that uh, just because of, you know, not many DBs have that as their number one play in their highlight video. Usually doesn't make the top 10. So uh, Mario's a physical guy, prides himself on being physical, uh, fundamentally um, and technique wise, really sound. And uh, it's been a little bit snake bit when it comes to, you know, the injury bug uh, since he's been here and uh, had a little cleanup job done in, in uh, late spring and, and came back and was again, just his old self. And um, so uh, another big body guy, but Andrew's, Andrew looks more like he could be a receiver or a safety um, and corner. Mario looks like a, a big corner or safety. And, um, you know, there's, there's probably a, a few more similarities than, than there are differences, to be honest with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brent, Lawton Swab with Clemson Sports Talk. Um, how big of an advantage is it for you guys uh, with the new redshirt rule this year, in your opinion, from a you know, depth of talent standpoint? Well, you don't have the stress of "quote unquote" burning a guy's year because you want to run him out on the kickoff team, uh, you know, after he's already played his fourth game. Um, I just think, from a development standpoint, you know, um, it gives them a, a real chance to to benefit from it. And uh, whether or not they use the year or not at at the back end of their career, this gives them an opportunity. It's a developmental game. The more you play, the better you improve. Uh, you know, fundamentally maturing wise, all of those things, you know, they come back the next year more prepared. So I think, uh, you know, it's going to help a lot of rosters across college football as well as build that depth and um, feel more confident and comfortable at uh, creating roles for guys. And uh, whether it's sub packages or just in, again, in the, the three deep, uh, if you will. And um, I think it's a wonderful rule. And again, it, it most of all, it really benefits the players, but certainly benefits our, our, our roster both now and, you know, in the future uh, in developing our players. Makes a lot of sense. Hey coach, this is, this is David Hood. Did those veteran guys at defensive tackle, Tyler and, and Jordan and, and Niles and some of those others, did they, show you what you wanted to see in camp and kind of hold off the charge of, of those talented youngsters? Um, they had their, their best camps, um, really made a you know, significant improvement. And um, a lot of little things, playing faster, and playing you know, with more knockback and getting better get offs and uh, improving their fundamentals and their, you know, their hand violence and, and um, pass rush and those things. So, uh, the young guys are coming and they're not going away, but I think it's more than anything else, I've seen, you know, strong leadership and, um, and, uh, veteran savviness, uh, so to speak, uh, from those guys. And, but we got a lot of guys that can play more so, you know, this year than, uh, than we did, we feel, you know, a year ago. And, um, so I think, I think the competition has made everybody better. And uh, just maturing and being here, you know, another season has, has uh, you know, benefited them, you know, as well. Brent, as freshman the defensive lineman, had, had a lot of uh, expectations coming in. Just what do you expect from them going into their first game and, and how did they look going through camp? Yeah, I mean, you know, our job as coaches is to help them always. 
and um, so handling the expectations and not trying to make every play and uh, you know help them be good at things uh, that they're good at and uh, give them a steady dose of those things and um, but I think this is a group of, of uh, young players that you know the ones in particular that you're talking about are used to playing at a high level used to the spotlight being on them and what I can appreciate more than anything about them is just their humility and their willingness to work, keep their head down, very low maintenance, uh, don't get distracted easily. And that's usually what the what the really good ones do. And uh, just have the right mindset, you know, to come in and work and compete every day and, and uh, uh, you know, be, have self-awareness about what they need to get better and then go to work at that every day as well. Let You know, it's been a group of uh, guys that have let us coach them really hard and uh, are fighting like tooth and nail every day to meet, you know, what our standards are as opposed to, you know, hoping that we widen the plate for them. And uh, just really um, and grateful for that because you got enough problems, uh, you know, uh, let alone if you added, had an added problem of just, you know, um, lack of maturity and um, that couldn't be further from the truth. And um, so just really proud of these guys and excited because they're going to make us better. And, uh, you know, they'll, they're not going to be, you know, what they're capable of being game one. They'll, you know, they're going to, I think that would be the biggest thing is don't put too much uh, expectation on them. Uh, you know, as coaches, you know, just, hey, man, just come in and do your job. You don't have to make special plays or uh, do freaky things. That, that'll naturally happen, you know, in the right time. So uh, just, again, play stance alignment, assignment key. Uh, and you just kind of have that process. And again, that's what I was talking about at the beginning. Just our job as coaches is to help them from a procedural standpoint. How do you play uh, at a high level? How do you have a winning grade one snap at a time? And I really try to simplify it, you know, for them that way. And um, as they uh, do accordingly, they'll, they'll earn, you know, more and more playing time. But uh, excited about these guys. They're going to, like I said, they'll, they'll make us better. And they have some tremendous skill sets. And, and it's been well noticed. Uh, you know, and, and noted uh, from, you know, certainly Coach Sweeney and, and a lot of our players, both on offense and defense. And um, uh, it's a group of guys that, you know, uh, that came in with a lot of to do and a lot of hype and things of that nature. But it's a group of guys that to me have over delivered up to this point. Um, their talent's been there. Yes. You know, refinement is still needed in their fundamentals and technique and understanding of what we do. Uh, but the most pleasing part is just the humility and their work ethic and their toughness and what great teammates that they are. Brent, this is Gene in Charleston. Sam Hartman, your thoughts? Yeah, tough guy, very competitive, tremendous instincts, um, just a very good feel for the game, uh, great leader, uh, has a real presence about him, uh, m no moments too big for him, um, you know, athletic, big arm. Uh, accurate. He's going to make all the layups for you uh, offensively and understand the defense and, you know, what the stresses are, things of that nature. So uh, really, to me, a coach's dream. Um, you know, sometimes you get those guys on the other side of the ball uh, at, at quarterback and you can get in their head. I don't see that as uh, he's not a guy that has got any head case issues. Uh, he's been a, a very a uh, good football player, very talented, uh, tremendous system player as well. Uh, so as coaches, you know, I know what having a system player is. Look, don't try to make all the plays, make the ones that are there for you. You got to make layups. Can't be airballing layups. In. And and um, I just I don't see a whole lot of weaknesses. Uh, he had a tremendous year the year before last, and when he came in last year, man, he just did outstanding. Where it's the Florida State win. Uh, or again, he, he played out of his mind against Syracuse and they had every chance to win. They throw a little screen uh, right there in overtime and <clears throat> completes it and the DB strips it and runs, runs it back for a touchdown. Uh, so they lose that game right at the, the end, a heartbreaker. Uh, you know, so that was two games after having played here in Death Valley. Uh, he got the call there in the Syracuse game and he's got tremendous, tremendous respect for him. Uh, did out of high school, played in the uh, Shrine Bowl with my son Jake, and they got to really uh, get to know each other well and just got a lot of respect for him, who he is as a leader and a player. Hey, Coach, Lawton Swan again. Uh, communication on game day is typically quieter when the offense is on the field, but, I mean, it's really going to be quiet. So 
not necessarily how that'll work for you guys, but I mean, do you anticipate being able to hear what they're trying to check to and, and things of that nature? It's not as much check to. You just want to communicate with your guys and have them the ability to communicate with each other. So, uh, you know, there I, I we haven't worked on any kind of people checking what they're checking to and the verbiage and all that. We got enough things to worry about. Uh, we're complicated enough as it is. But uh, the ability to communicate with one another, uh, you know, as coaches to players and certainly players to players, um, you know, can be advantageous uh, when, you know, it's, it is, it's really hard to, to, to play defense, to communicate here in Death Valley in a typical year uh, because how deafening it is. And, uh, but that's a tremendous advantage too defensively because offenses have to, you know, operate, you know, differently, you know, as far as their strategy uh, is concerned. So I uh, anticipate it being, you know, easier quote unquote than it's, than it's been, you know, uh, in my coaching, you know, lifetime. Brent, with Xavier being out for the start and, and Justin missing some time, just how do you feel about that defensive end group and the depth you guys have there? Well, I've just, I've seen improvement, you know, uh, you know, Logan Rudolph was a co-starter last year. Uh, broke my heart. He's one of my favorite players on our defense and one of, been one of my favorite players that uh, I've, I've had, we've had since I've been at Clemson because he's, you know, he's very Ben Boulware-esque when it comes to passion and uh, intensity and uh, love and respect for the game and how he practiced every day and things of that nature. But love the group of guys, um, you know, got tremendous ceiling. I do think that um, there's no question we're improved from where we were a year ago uh, at that position. And we'll be even better when Xavier gets back uh, and healthy. And um, just it's a year, you know, that's more seasoned. Uh, whether you're talking, you know, Justin or you talk KJ or, or uh, Maskell, uh, you know, for that matter. And uh, Greg Williams has been coming along and learning how to put his hand in the dirt. Had never done that until, you know, last year for the first time. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to see that group. You put Miles Murphy in there as well, uh, who will be, you know, has a chance to be a, a co-starter uh, as well. And, um He's right there in that thick, uh, the thick of things, um, just lacks the experience uh, and knowledge uh, of the other guys. But we've had those guys, Justin and uh, Justin and, and um, uh, uh, KJ, sorry about that, uh, have had really good um, spring and, and, and fall camp and they've done a great job leading and, and fighting and competing every day. So looking forward to seeing those guys, uh, you know, improve and uh, be in a better place this year. And I uh, feel, feel like, you know, again, overall, that the defensive line, you know, has a chance to be a strength uh, when it's all said and done. But we still got work to do. Coach Trevor Grove, CUTigers.com here. Um, Coach Clawson's offenses traditionally go very fast. Um, what kind of challenges does that present uh, from a personnel standpoint, rotating your guys in and out? And how important does it make it to, you know, get three and outs, get, get your defense off the field? and uh, prevent fatigue on a night that could be a, a humid uh, early September night? Yeah, I mean, they've been one of the fastest offenses in college football. Every year they got a tremendous system. They, they do a great job of um, coaching within the system. They're just not trying to go fast and hope you're not lined up. They've got a very systematic way to attack you. Um, very well coached fundamentally. And uh, players are really smart. They have answers for everything that you do uh, on any given play. You know, they've got an answer for, for uh, off coverage, for press man, for cover two, for three D, uh, for four man front, three man front, uh, all of it. So uh, they do, they just do, a, first of all, just, you know, they've, they've done, you know, uh, as good a job in this conference since I've been here than, as anybody. And uh, coaching and developing and, and putting their players in position to be successful. And I think that's what, coaching is you just don't do what you do to do it but you got to get your players to play at a high level you know within your system and then again play to their strengths from one year to the next but from a uh, procedural standpoint they do go really fast and um, a lot of offenses do uh, but they've been one of the best in the country at doing it year in and year out and uh, you know getting into a rhythm offensively and getting you in your on your heels defensively so Getting your hand in the dirt and playing with great technique and putting your eyes where they belong, that's a, that's, 
to me is a is one way to give yourself a chance and so that's been a, a challenge for us uh challenge to our guys and certainly not just this week our offense has tempo in their offense as well uh and so we we do a great job of uh, helping each other you know on the practice field uh that way um but nothing like game day you know to get baptized and um so i'm excited i love that challenge um you know that's a uh, you know, just the, the challenge of getting your guys to um, negate, if you will, if, 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 if tempo is designed to create a leveraged uh, advantage uh, up front or outside in coverage, if it's designed to get you um, to not line up and put your eyes on your keys, if that's to uh, have bust in your communication, if that's what the, the, the tempo's for, then I love that the, the counter uh, of that is, you know, uh, is getting the call, is getting your hand in the dirt, is getting your highs where they belong, is playing with great technique and fundamentals, uh, doing an unbelievable job uh, at communicating and adjusting uh, within the play. And uh, I just I love that challenge. And um, but there, that's a strength of theirs. Uh, there's no question about it. And uh, you know we got a we got a big time challenge. You know Saturday night in that regard. Uh, Brent, uh, I was wondering how much of a I guess revelation that Malcolm Green has been over the last month just at how well he's picked things up and then maybe where is he sort of in the pecking order for being able to get on the field and uh, as somebody maybe you guys trust uh, right now. Yeah, so Malcolm's done just outstanding. We've played him. Uh, uh, he and uh, Tyler uh, Venables have, have played probably the at most different spots. They just have a skill set where they, they can play at a variety of spots and, and at a young age, when you have some other guys coming back, we've been able to try to see, you know, the, you know, try them out, if you will, at different areas and find out what they're most comfortable at and where they can help us. And then as things have evolved through camp with other guys at other positions, that's played a part in it as well. But I think this week is important uh, for Malcolm. He's been playing, you know, at nickel. Uh, he's been playing also at, at a corner, both corner positions, a little bit of safety and has done a really nice job. He's picked things up. Football's easy to him. He loves to compete. Again, the moment's not too big for him. Uh, he's a very aggressive uh, young man. His fundamentals and technique, he was incredibly well coached in high school, and uh, that has shown up. And, uh, and under stress, uh, those fundamentals show up. And um, so just to get him to play within the system, uh, not try to do too much like a lot of young guys will, will try to do, uh, and again, he's got to have a great week, you know, just in regards to preparation to determine some of that pecking order, uh, things of that nature. But been super proud, really pleased of uh, Malcolm. And again, just same thing, got a, uh, you know, a great mindset and, uh, you know, has a go to work mentality every day. He's a grinder, loves to be coached hard, uh, holds himself to a very, very high standard, uh, does not have an overinflated opinion of himself. Uh, he knows exactly where he is. And, uh, and he's never satisfied. He's got that, that attribute going for him as well, which I just love. Very, very hungry uh, player. We've got Nolan Turner on deck, so we'll take two more questions for Coach V. Hey, Brent, this is David with ESPN. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I know Dabo has made a, a, a habit of talking about Isaiah last year as if when you've got Isaiah Simmons, you've kind of got like three guys. So uh, how do you replace three guys uh, this year? Is it a matter of personnel and guys like Mike Jones being able to step in and do similar things? Or do you kind of have to scheme differently uh, because of the, the change in skill set there? Well, I just would say that from year to year, everything changes, you know. Uh, not everything stays the same. So, again, our job as coaches is to identify some of those um, what are areas of concern or again now this is it was a weakness a year ago now it's a strength uh, or again maybe I've got a unique personnel group uh, and how can we best utilize uh, the personnel and at the same time play winning football and uh, play great defense uh, uh, so I think all of those things playing into uh, into it more so than whether or not you have another Isaiah Simmons uh, great question. Isaiah could do so many different things. When you have a player that can do that, it creates instant depth. Um, you know, you can get a little creative if you want. Um, you don't have to. Uh, we felt like, you know, we, we needed to. Um, and we could. 
but uh, as much as anything, that, that's what we needed to do. And uh, so from year to year, that's what we'll do. Um, Mike's had a great camp, had a super spring. He's in a great place mentally. And uh, you know, just I'm pumped for him. And he's worked so hard, uh, worked so hard beyond the football field when we've required them to be here. He's just been a great leader. He's really coming to his own. And so I'm looking forward to watching him play. And, um, and, and Mike can do a variety of things. He's played multiple linebacker positions for us in the past. And uh, he's just a, a really good football player, but uh, he's really come to his own as a leader and whatnot. And again, we've got, you know, a lot of other young guys too. We lost, you know, we lost some tremendous players in the secondary, but we really feel really good about our, our, our two deep in particular and a few of the guys that we've recruited. Uh, as freshmen this last year, and and uh, and some of that, to be honest, you know, you, you sometimes when there's so many unknowns, you kind of figure it out as the season goes, and and then you'll start playing to your strengths, whether that's in the back end, up front, and uh, you know things of that nature. So, um, uh, but I'm 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 really excited about um, the development, you know, that Mike's had there. Uh, you know, he's he's done a really really good job of um, you know controlling the controllables. We'll take one final one for Coach. Hey, Coach. Yeah, it's David again. My, my question was actually going to be on the safeties. You've, you've got a veteran guy and Nolan back there and then a whole lot of, of talented youngsters. How has that kind of shaken out during camp? Um, I, we just feel like we got, you know, a number of guys that can play. Um, that's been probably the most pleasing uh, that, you know, we feel rock solid about guys that are starting and we feel really good about, uh, you know, the other guys. So whether that's uh, Joseph Charleston or it's, uh, or it's Ray or it's, um, you know, Tyler or it's uh, RJ Mickens or uh, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, we got Mario's playing some nickel. We got Malcolm Green. Um, you know, there's a bunch of guys there. Uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody, but um, feel really good about, you know, that group collectively uh, there at safety. A um, uh, bunch of eager, hungry, uh, edgy, um, physical um, guys that can run. They got length. Um, really, uh, again, 3D, and we, we feel really, really good uh, about that group right now. All right.